Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and in this tutorial for the uh, Talos paint engine we're going to be using some of the Scale 75 paints uh, the particular ones from Fantasy and Games set uh, we get ours from Element Games if you don't know who they, they are, check them out, you can get 15-20% to 20 discount on uh, hobby stuff including Games Workshop merchandise and I'll pop a, a code on the bottom of this so when you're at the checkout you can save more money or earn more crystals to spend in store and we all earn them too so without any further mucking about let's crack on with the video so I painted the Talos paint engine using black primer and I kept it in sub assembly um, mainly because it was it was really fiddly there's a lot of small parts on it so I'd recommend painting it that way now the next color doesn't look much different to the base layer but it's actually negro black by scale 75 and um, I'll tell you, the second I used these Scale 75 colours, I fell in love with them. I, feel, I felt like throwing out all my old paints. Uh, if you like glazing or airbrushing, these are absolutely immaculate. They've got tiny pigment and the colour range is absolutely beautiful. The next colour is Despair Green by Scale 75. And I will repeat that. Certain somebody on the comments was kicking off that we keep telling everyone what the paints are. So, what, these, these bits of footage are a bit long. Uh, which gave me plenty of time to run there and as you can see they come out the airbrush fine and they also work really really well with the um, glazing technique with the brush and I'm only using a standard by Games Workshop and a wet palette and they glaze and build up really really nicely the next colour is Insamouth Blue by Scale 75 and obviously it still looks really black and muted but uh, you're doing this in layers so they really do build up nicely over each other they don't show up very well on camera but uh, you can see the transition from the black, the negro, grey and the despair green and now the insamouth blue is really going to start adding some colour and it is quite a vibrant jump from the, from the two so I could have really mixed it in with the previous colour but uh, as this was the first time using these paints I thought you know I'll just uh, go with the instructions. I would have shown you the instructions on the inside of the box, but um, they, I think they are copyrighted, the images and everything, so I wasn't going to bother with that. As you can see, building up those colours, and that is just Insamouth Blue. And now I'm going to mix Insamouth Blue and Miskatonic Grey, and the Miskatonic Grey is still from that same set of Scale 75. This is a not quite a 50 50 mix it's about 60 percent in smouth blue possibly 70 percent and then a little drop of miskatonic gray but all i'm doing is glazing up to the extreme hot spots i'm trying to do a bit of a different style on this one it does take a bit of time um, and it's quite awkward to get around all those ball bearings or spikes on the armor also decided to start highlighting up the side of the uh, helmet instead of just the top of it like what we usually do. As you can see those paints are so thin but they build up really really nicely over time. And after applying that, those layers of colours, that's what we've got so far. And I think as a set of paints they are absolutely beautiful, they go on nice and smooth. Uh, I want to use these and I want to get some Artis Opus brushes to go with them and I reckon they'll do some excellent blending work and uh, be really fun to use together. Now we're going to use more Insamouth Blue, so we're going up to like a 50-50 mix here and Miskatonic Grey on the hot spots. Just bringing out the very edges now, but you know, shading it so that it has those curves trapped in it. We want the shape of the armor left in there. So gradually getting, the areas are getting smaller and smaller, but because these paints are so thin, you can actually start from a bit further back to shape the armor a lot more. And now we're going to add even more Miskatonic Grey into that mix as we go for, I think, what is the final edge highlight for that. You could use this now to edge highlight, but uh, I wasn't sure where, where I was going to stop at this point. As you can see, those uh, hot spots are really starting to brighten up in comparison to the dark armor where the despair green and everything else is. 
Another reason we tell you what these colours are is because we're learning all the names of them repeatedly as well. And as you can see, I'm mucking about seeing if I can edge highlight with that colour, and it would work. And I think I do end up edge highlighting most of it with that. Now I'm going to jump to some Games Workshop paints because I love painting things in purple. So we're going to use Demon at Hide by Games Workshop. So we're going to use that for all the fleshy parts of the uh, paint engine. I wanted to go for a sort of bruised living, a living saw sort of skin, but not in the Nurgle sense. More like a skin that's in a lot of pain. After that, we're going to use a really bizarre mix. We're going to mix Demonet Hide with Sandry Dust by Games Workshop. And I'm going to be using a lot of glazing techniques on here, and that's why the, some of the footage is a bit longer than the uh, average 30 to 20 seconds that it usually is. And this is only the first highlight for the skin, so we're going to just generally build up the uh, shapes of everything, leaving the Demonet Hide in all the recesses, because that's going to be our definition. And we're going to need that, especially around the back area, because there's a lot of intricate details there. As you can see, building that up, it now goes from a purple to an, a very sickly sort of yellowy purple. As you can see, that's built up, it looks more bruised, but it still looks like, it now looks like it's got more life to it. After that, we're going to mix Zandri Dust, Demon at Hide, and a little bit of Miskatonic Grey by scale 75. That's just going to mute the yellowy colour to it, but we're going to use that as the underneath tone. And now what we're going to do with this, this particular colour set is start adding the highlights to those colours. So in this case we're sort of separating the colour tone and the highlights uh, as the two separate things rather than both being the same thing. And once that's done, we're going to use a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Drusy Violet. The main reason for that is I don't like using Drusy Violet by Games Workshop on its own. Um, it's a very stark, um, sort of a cartoony purple. Um, it doesn't work for flesh, but if you put in the Agrax, it starts to tone it a little bit more red. And uh, as you can see, it's really watered down. And that's just going to add a filter onto all those. It's also going to make the Zandri dust on the underneath. That's going to start popping out a bit more and be a bit more defined because of the filter over the top of it. And now we're going to go back to our mix of Zandri dust, Demonet Hide and Miskatonic Grey and start bringing up those highlights again. And as you can see the skin's really starting to take shape here. It's um, got its colour definition, it's starting to get its highlights in. And again, I'm still only using the standard brush at this point because uh, I find it's okay for glazing. You don't want your brush too small. You need it to hold enough water for your paint to stay wet while you're glazing. Even when doing fine detail points. After that, we're just going to add a little bit more Miskatonic Grey to the mix. And keep bringing up just the highlights at this point. The muscles and the textures and everything are really starting to be shaped at this point. It can be a bit awkward to put the highlights on the um, bicep as a, the angle that it's leaning at, the, the light could be hitting the top of it or the middle of it, but uh, that's always awkward to blend when it's round and smooth on both edges. So just choose one or the other one and not both. But uh, if you keep practicing glazing all the way through, this will be kind of easy and quite enjoyable. Next, I'm just going to use Miskatonic Grey on its own. And that is most of the flesh done there. I think it is anyway. We'll see what the next page has to say. As I've got a very, very long paint list. Like I said, these bits of footage are quite long, so I wanted you to see the effects of the uh, blending. I do like the hooks, the underneath of this thing reminds me of something from Hellraiser, I really wanted to define those parts. The next colour I was using, um, I didn't know what these parts were on the back of the model, as I don't play um, Drakari or Dark Elder as they used to be called, but I'm just using Rakar Flesh because it's going to fit the palette, it's going to work with 
the miskatonic greys and the purples that we've got and it's also going to add a little bit of contrast to that blue armor that we've got going on i didn't want everything to just be metal and blue and uh, maybe a bit of purple I wanted to put in a, a bit more detail than usual and just to tone that down i'm doing an agrax earth shade wash but uh, I do this in two or three steps. I really wanted to keep this fine. And I also wanted to keep in control of it. As I didn't want the Agrax Earth Shade running off into the bits that I've left as flesh. And uh, toning those so you couldn't see the, the difference in the colours. So I did about two or three washes of this Agrax Earth Shade. Just really, really thin. That way you can keep in control. Make sure the uh, dark areas are where you need them to be. And then I decided, after doing that, that I was going to do a 50-50 mix of Juicy Violet and Null Oil instead of the Agrax Earth Shade to uh, darken those down a little bit more than the rest so the uh, contrast with what I'm going to be painting as bone. I, I, I assumed that it would be some form of spine thing. And if you guys know what these parts are, just leave a comment and let us know. Because uh, me and Andy unfortunately don't know everything about the 40k universe. Now we're going to use just Rakarth Flesh again, really watered down, and we're going to start bringing up the highlights back onto the spine parts that we did the Agrax Earth Shade wash on. Just be really gentle with this, take your time. Uh, I mainly started at the spikes, then looked at it to figure out where the rest of the highlights would be. So I did the spikes and the bits that stick out at the side, they definitely needed highlighting. Then I basically started working around all the edges of those spine pieces and that took ages because there was a lot of detail on that tail. Now to um, start working on some of the metallics I decided I'd use a uh, brass scorpion for the... Well I, interpret, uh, I interpreted these parts as being some form of implant or something that had skin wrapped around and stapled onto it so I decided they would be metal which is why I decided to use a uh, brass scorpion which is what I usually use I keep I'm trying to get away from doing the same colors all the time but uh, it just seemed to work with this model then I'm going to mix brass scorpion and moon lord brass and as you can see I've uh, switched the bit of model so you can tell I've done all these other parts in those same colors I like the details on these underneath parts here, uh, they're kind of cool, a bit awkward to get to with the paintbrush though. And when you're using your Rune Lord Brass and Brass Scorpions, be careful that you don't overdo it and tone it all right down. Basically just doing all the raised areas. After that we're going to use Rune Lord Brass on its own, working towards those top areas again and possibly picking up some of those edge highlights as well. But the uh, light source for the underneath of this is a bit awkward to figure out, so I basically just went around all of them. I'm going to add some washes later on to tone them down while they need toning. And after that I'm going to use Warp Block Bronze, and I'm going to thin that down a lot, and then I'm going to use it as a wash, which some of you all have seen me do before on videos. I think um, instead of just starting from the warp block bronze and working up, it's actually quicker to do it this way and then use the warp block bronze to tone everything down, like you would an Agrax Earth Shade wash. It just tints all the metals ever so slightly more dirty, but uh, leaves that sort of metallic look on there, whereas the washers and the inks will uh, take away from that. Then I uh, decided to start breaking up all those colours down there and started using a uh, lead belcher by Games Workshop. Remember to leave some of these um, just plain black for now. We're going to add some uh, venom or potion or I'm not sure what it is. Um, but some of these are definitely vials or some liquid substance that looks pretty nasty. So uh, I wanted to paint those in as well. So pick which ones you want to have that colour and then uh, blend the rest in using lead belcher. And if you're unsure, just uh, do this step later. Now we're going to use an Agrax Earth Shade and go over the whole lot. And that's going to tone those uh, the lead belcher ever so slightly. It's also going to make sure that the 
shaded areas and the grooves and all these detailed metal parts are fully darkened down so they're going to now give a real high contrast with the rune lord brass that's on top of them now to blend the bone that I'm doing with the Rakar Flesh to the purples, all I was using was an uh, Agrax Thirst Shade. Yeah, that's all I really used for that was Agrax Thirst Shade, really watered down, because the redness of the Agrax Thirst Shade will add to the soreness of the, uh, of the muscle texture. So you can blend those and it will look like they are protruding from the skin. You could also do a layer of Rakar Flesh there if you wanted to. No, Reckon Flesh Shade, sorry. All I'm doing here is uh, once I've picked which ones I want to be vials of liquid, I've gone in with a black primer and very carefully, not to uh, ruin any of the work, and just go over and give them a nice even coat so they're solid black again. After that, I'm going to start painting the majority of them in Caliban Green. And this is really, really watered down again. As per usual, uh, we don't use thick paint. The thinner you paint, the better result you're going to get. It's just going to take you a lot longer to uh, paint them. It's really watered down, so the Caliban Green is going to uh, tint the black, but where you really want the Caliban Green, um, you can just do multiple layers, and that's going to start building up the liquid look. Decided to do something different when it came, came to the uh, some of the other pipes, because I didn't want them all green, like the box art would show. Um, Decided to use Filthy Brown by Game Color and started painting some hazard stripes, um, which I'd not do I'd done hazard stripes before, but not on something um, circular or some pipe. It is kind of difficult to do, but if you just take your time and make sure each one goes in the same direction, it does look alright. Now back to the vials, I'm going to use Sick Green, really watered down. Starting from the bottom of the vial and bringing that up to the uh, to the edge we made with the Caliban green to start bringing this um, foggy sort of liquid effect up and uh, around those. And you could just do a straight edge if you wanted to, but it's going to look um, too sharp. Now the skull, I painted that in Morning Fang Brown to get it started, and then I'm just going to use Zandri Dust. They're yeah, really watered down again, as you can tell by the uh, the footage. Just starting from the, not even from the bottom, I usually start from just above the eyebrows leaving a space and then blend up and uh, once you've got that going up you can see where all the other colours need to be and then start going around, around the cheekbones and uh, from the, when it comes to the back go from the bottom up to the top and you get a nice even coat and you can see a little bit of that morning fang brown showing through. Then we're going to use Zandri Dust and a little bit of Ivory by Model Colour, which I've not used before for doing bone, but um, I'm starting to like that colour as well. Um, Andy uses it a lot in his videos. It's, just, it's like another off-white, it's a little bit more yellow. This time we're going to focus on the nose bone, the teeth, the top of the skull, leaving that Zandri Dust and Morning Fang just showing. And now I'm going to use Army Paint a Strong Tone because the Zandri Dust would have been a little bit. No, Agrax Earth Shade, sorry. It was uh, just not something I wanted to add on to there. I wanted to go for something a little less reddish, and Army Paint a Strong Tone is a very muted colour. It's just a, a very solid brown. And uh, it's definitely one you should have in your collection when it comes to washing things. I mean, Agrax Earthshade's great, but uh, Army Paint a Strong Tone definitely does the jo jobs where Agrax Earthshade doesn't quite work. Now we're going to use Elysian Green by Games Workshop and mix that with Sick Green by Game Air and carry on working on those uh, vials. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, painted those at an angle to go with the way these will sit on the back of the paint engine. And I'm just working my way from the bottom, and just not even from the bottom at this point, just below where we've put the edge in and then start working that edge back up. And then I'm just going to use Elysian Green on its own at the very top, which is a very yellowy green and it's going to finish off that sort of chemical look. 
you wanted to you could do this with some reds as well maybe some blues and mix up what's in there but I wanted to stick with green there's already enough different colors on this palette for this particular model I also carried this on with the uh, guns at the top and a few of the other pieces which you'll see now I'm going to use Zandri Dust and Ivory again because uh, the wash is now dried and just bring that back up for one, I think that's one final highlight. And it really sharpens that face up and that skull, brings in some detail. Now I'm going to start using Insamouth Blue and Hiri Blue which is another scale 75 colour but it's from a different set a miskatonic grey I'm going to start putting some chips into the um, into the armour I did have another, te another technique I wanted to use but when I tried to use it it didn't quite work and I didn't have the materials to do so so I'm not going to bother with that chipping I will get back to that on another video these are quite sporadic and can also be used for doing the edge highlights then I'm going to use dryad bark to just either paint right next to the scratches in the armor or go right through the center of it so there's bits of the um, insamouth blue mixture showing through on both sides giving it a bit more depth in hindsight I would have liked to make these scratches quite a bit bigger because um, there's a lot going on on the model and they don't show up that well in the final result but they are there Now I'm going back to the hazard stripes because I wasn't just going to leave them as filthy brown and I'm using pale yellow by game colour to start highlighting just the very tops of those uh, yellow parts. I want to keep this water down and do it in several layers so we get a good transition from that really yellowy colour to the muted yellow colour, the pale yellow, but it's going to give the effect that the light's hitting it and is just muting the colour rather than making it more vibrant. Uh, I also did these hazard stripes on the um, the fists and claws, but I didn't want to go over the top with it because they're quite striking. Then I used Seraphin Sepia by Games Workshop, which is a wash I don't use very often. You could have I could have used Agrax for the shade, but uh, this one seems to work really well for highlighting yellows. And I'm just going to go over the entire entire pipe, and then later on I'm going to pick out the black parts again and uh, bring those back in because the washers they tint your black and off black colour so they're going to need some extra work and also I want to neaten up what I've already done it's probably the best way to do that is to do it do all the yellow parts and then bring the black back in now this took ages to get the result I was looking for this is Agrax Earthshade really watered down over a Rakoth flesh base and as you can see that's barely showing up at all but um, what I essentially ended up doing was painting this wash in like a very thin paint around all the recessed areas um, to give that blade a bit more life and shape to it I wanted it to look like a nice big sharp piece of bone and uh, that's what we've got after I think that's about three four layers of wash and we're going to keep going over this and doing that again and then what we're going to do is we're going to give the don't want to get too ahead of myself here I'm just open I was hoping that shoot would show up on camera then we're going to go for a Rakarth flesh highlight because right before that what I've done I've done the main indents with the Agrax then I've give a very gentle wash over the whole thing, leaving the indents even darker. Now I'm bringing it, bringing it back up with a rack off flesh, just on those edges and uh, edges and corners. You want to blend your corners so they look more round and bring out the shape of that because it's a very interesting shape. It's very eye catching. And there's a, quite a few little claws to do on this as well. Next is Rakarth Flesh and Ivory by Monocolor. And uh, just painting over what I washed down before, but only in the raised areas, trying to really accentuate the shape of this thing. Just because it's such a cool shape, and I didn't want to do it in metal, it would have been pretty boring. 
And there's a lot of metal parts on this thing already, so I just thought, do something different, and bone's always good. Uh, once we've finished with like highlighting these corners and edges, we're going to be using just another layer of Agrax Earthshade watered down. Sorry if this bit gets a bit repetitive, but uh, you, I wanted you to see I want you to see the steps building up, and uh, it's all about taking your time with this stuff. If you take more time and more watered down paints, you're going to get a much better result. I was also having a lot of trouble at this point getting this to show up on camera probably because uh, some of it's really bright and I've got three lights on my desk. And uh, since we did a wash on these, we're going to do a even smaller area of pale yellow by Game Color over all the hazard stripes again. Because we've got a good blend on there with the uh, previous two and the wash and then just bring up the corners ever so slightly. I wasn't 100% happy with the hazard stripe paint on these, but I'd not tried doing it on anything that shape before. Usually I'd use an airbrush and some Tamiya tape, but that wouldn't have worked for this, because the area's right against everything else. So I put the back parts on, um, temporarily, and the claws to get a good look at what we've got so far. And uh, we're nearly finished. There's not that much left to do, guys. It's just a case of catching up with a lot of this off camera, I think. Okay, so let's uh, crack on with the rest of it. These um, little things I interpreted to be staples around the metal part, I decided to do with a lead belcher. Basically because that's all I could think they were. Um, at this point, there's so many colours on the palette already, I didn't want to stray too far. I mean, I could have done them more as uh, open wounds or something, but they've got all these little arms coming out of it, so that didn't quite make sense to me either. I also... Um, started doing all the spikes at the top in a different colour to everything else. Although it's a similar colour, I wanted them to stand out a little bit more than just using lead belcher. I used black model air metallic, and the reason I use black model air metallic for this instead of the normal lead belcher as a start, is if I put a wash on there, there's a good chance I might lose control because there are spikes on top of that armour. So using the lead belcher, oh sorry not lead belcher, the black model air metallic being such a dark colour, it looks like lead belcher with a wash on it anyway. So that sort of helped me skip a step. I then used lead belcher to start highlighting that up. And what you've got there is it looks like you've got a wash on lead belcher. And then you've got some fresh lead belcher over the top of it. And this really makes the spikes stand out against the armour. It was quite time consuming. Because once you start doing a few of these spikes on the armour, you realise just how many of them there are. Then I used Steel by Model Air Metallic because that's quite a vibrant colour just for the very tips of all these spikes. And that combination gave quite a quick and easy um, transition. I might start doing that on a few guns and other random metallic parts uh, I want to paint. If it was on something else you could easily... If it was on something that wouldn't <coughs> spill easily onto your armour you could definitely do that, then add a wash, then bring it back up again. Now I'm going to use Reclam Flesh Shade uh, to start bringing in some of the sores around these parts. They seemed a bit clean and surgical for me, so I thought we'll not only tone the metallics ever so slightly, we'll uh, tone the skin around there, and it's a very thin wash of Reclam Flesh Shade done in several layers, just to um, add some extra depth into that skin, because that was we haven't done anything on that in a while and I thought let's just tone it up, bring in some sore areas and break up all that purple. And then after doing that, all I did to uh, emphasise the rest of the flesh was go back to that Miskatonic mix with a Miskatonic grey Rakarth flesh and just pick out the extreme highlights, especially around those hooks at the back where the um, flesh is being pulled. You really want to bring out that detail, so there's just a little bit of a highlight on each of those. Also, all the bits... I forgot to paint these parts while doing everything else, so what I ended up doing as time was running out is I just used German Grey by Model Color uh, as a highlight for anything that still looked pretty black. 
just to give everything a sort of complete look. Now what I'll end up doing is um, spraying it with a gloss varnish, doing an oil wash, spraying it with a matte varnish. And these are the parts, I'm mean, going to spray those, once I've sprayed those I'm going to put all the little arms and everything else in, but I'm going to do that last so I don't damage anything in the process, the varnish will help protect all this. And uh, there's the finished result. Uh, I'd have changed a few things on this one I think, um, maybe spent a bit more time on that bone or darkened it down a bit, the camera does not pick it up very well at all, and um, maybe put a little bit more definition in that purple. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, if you do, hit that like, hit subscribe and share with your friends. We will be giving this one away next week, uh, so one of our lucky subscribers will be getting this. Um, a big thanks for the 1,500 subs, guys. And um, I think Andy's got something completely different for next Monday, so hope you enjoy that one as well. Catch you in the next one, guys, and thanks for watching.